take a look at the 2022 Kia Soul, and we're gonna compare it to the Kia Forte, which happens to be a 2021, simply because that's what we have in stock right now, because it's August, but they're very similar. 2022, no real changes except for the logo. And 2021, again, I expect to be a carryout. I actually don't have information on the 2022 Kia Forte yet. So those are the two cars we're looking at. If you've never been with us before, we take a really deep in-dive look at these cars, Kia and Hyundai vehicles, every single weekday at two o'clock Eastern time. And we spent about a half an hour with them. So if this video is longer than that, we've just gone a little off topic. It probably won't be too much longer today. We've gone through these before and uh, we'll do it again. So let's take a look. If you want to join us, if you, sorry, if you just want to skip ahead to the content because you're not live with us, you can go to the three minute mark. That's where we get started. In the meantime, if you want to uh, listen for some news and some notes and I'll show you how to join us live, that's what we're going to do right now. All right, 14 of you on. If we have any connectivity issues, guys, we've had some internet issues here today. I think they're resolved, but there's any, if there's any connectivity issues, try to let me know in the comment section. I can swip it off to my own uh, network and we'll go from there. All right, flipping through over here. If you wanna join us live, you don't need this page, you need this page. Go to our YouTube page and you will see that we have a little video that plays here and that'll randomly change every now and then. But if you refresh the page at exactly two o'clock Eastern time, what you see is that our live video takes over that page. So you can uh, click on that live video. You're probably gonna have to watch an ad for a, another uh, dealership or something else, something else right now. Uh, I'm watching a Polaris ad. Uh, if you, uh, I gotta run my own ad here really quickly. If you are interested in buying a car uh, in Ontario, give us a call. Uh, Brantford Kia, Brantford Hyundai, or Owen Sound Hyundai. I can connect you up with a team that can help you out throughout the province and uh, we'll help you out. There's your cheapy nothing ad. There we go. All right, so let me see. Let's talk news and notes for a quick second here. And news and notes. First of all, August, July, August, really tough time for me because I like to show you new things. And we're in that stage where we're kind of clearing out the older inventory, waiting for the new inventory to come in. So I've got a couple vacations planned in the next... Uh, several weeks, uh, only been working half a week this week. And uh, then we'll of course fill in things. So if you're not looking, if you're looking for me Thursday through, um, I think I'm off Thursday and Monday and Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, so I'll be camping. Maybe I'll let you follow me along on my Instagram account if you want. Uh, in the meantime, what's going on? We are still waiting for the Santa Cruz to show up, which will show up in August. Could show up any time now. So uh, of course, even though we're kind of fading through things, have a ton of information i could have a real blockbuster come up and when that happens uh we'll be doing that same thing some of these uh, ionic 5 ev6 type information we're waiting for those sportage uh, information or sportage information if you're american a uh, lot of that could come in the next little while so uh we're gonna throw up a few here where maybe you've seen this before forte versus soul uh but today we'll be talking about um those again and then we again just be prepared to mix in something that is probably pretty highly desirable all right those of you that are just on hey we're at the three minute mark so i'm supposed to get this going those of you that jumped on already do me a favor hit that like button you guys know how this works it's youtube i'm just gonna beg you just hit it all right thanks guys all right here we go so what we've got in front of us again is a 2022 kia soul and it happens to be a 2021 kia forte basically because that's what's currently in stock right now and we're going to go through them in detail here because there's a lot in common between that between these two they have a soul ex plus compared to a forte ex premium the forte excuse me the soul one of them is about 600 dollars more than the other one uh oh boy uh, yeah the soul is about 600 dollars more give or take rounding a little bit there so basically, if you can afford one, you can afford the other. They both got sunroof. They both got blind spot detection. They both have the same engine, same transmission. They're both front wheel drive. Uh, they both have a number of similar features, but they're really quite different. And again, both being that same affordability type class, I really encourage you to drive one and the other. Even if you only came in for the soul, just take out a test drive on a Forte. And if you only came in for the Forte, take a test drive in the Soul. And what happens is we see a lot of people that come in on the one and really like certain things about the other. And they've got two options within their price point right there. What is the comfort level for a six foot five passenger front and back for the Forte? Well, I'm about six feet. So we'll throw me in the front and the back. We'll talk about that. Um, back seat in the Forte, eh, six five might be tight. Uh, Soul, you'd be okay in that. So again, if you're 6'5", there may be one better for you than the other. So I'm just taking questions as we go here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to dig in. I'm going to start with the Soul. The Soul happens to be 2022. Then we're going to move to the Forte and we're going to take your questions throughout. So like I said, half an hour, grab your snack, grab your beverages. Uh, let's have some fun. All right. If you've never been here before, uh, do me a favor. If you've never swung by before, just drop a hi, drop a hello. We've got a few regulars. We've got a few that have never been here. So feel free to comment. Feel free to ask questions. And again, if I don't get to your question right away, I will get to your question throughout the course. I'll do my best to hit everything I can. All right. Kia Soul, first of all, before we go in, let's talk about keys. Now, the Soul is a little bit more expensive. Let's just show you the MSRP. 
25095 I always show MSRP. That's just sort of for a comparison measure. That's where we go. So 25095 It's up 100 bucks this year over last year. So 2022 over 21. It's up 100 bucks. This one is $24,595. So we're right around that $25,000 mark, give or take. Uh, you both have LED lights on these trims. Uh, so again, a lot of good uh, things in here. There is a difference with the keys. And that's because, again, the Soul is an EX Plus and the Forte is an EX Premium. So Kia Soul key, nice new key. You got your buttons on the side there. I don't know if you can see them. There we go. Yeah, you can kind of see them. And it is a jackknife style key. You have the new logo on this one but it is a jackknife style key, which means it's gonna be a little thicker than the Forte key. Forte happens to have the older logo because it's 2021 and is a thinner key. The Forte has keyless entry at this point. So push button start, keyless entry. The Forte key is going in my pocket for the rest of this video and it's not gonna come out. The sole key, I do need to pull it out to use it to start the car. So one little difference there. Now, jumping in the Soul, those of you that know me know that I own a Kia Soul. Mine happens to be an electric car. So would I have chosen one over the other if they were both electric? I don't know because only the Soul is available as an electric car. And, uh, but I like the Soul. And one of my favorite things about the Soul, if you've never sat in a Soul, even if the outside look, like let's be honest, I get it, the outside look, polarizing. Some people like it, some people really don't. Even if you don't like the Soul, when you get to the showroom, have a seat in the seat because it is a little bit different than any other car out there. It's probably one of my favorite seating positions in any car. And I'll tell you why, let's hop in for a second. When I get in here, there's a big, big opening here. I'm not really ducking underneath the door. I'm about six feet tall. The seat really goes up or down. So I can really crank it up or I can bring it way, way down. And it's got this, this square kind of look, moves the pillar further away from my head. So this is the kind of thing that doesn't show up on camera, but it feels very large in here around your head especially, around your face, that kind of thing. And when I sit down, I sit much more, let me see if I can show you my legs, much more with my legs beyond my knee down as opposed to my legs beyond my knee out. So my lower legs and a forte are gonna be a little more out. Here they're down. This to me is a very comfortable seating position. It's unique because some of our SUVs are a little different again and you just get in this car, it's the right height, it's not too high, not too low, and it immediately feels comfortable. It's just kind of weird how that works. Uh, so one thing I really like about the Soul and I think a lot of people should just try out, just to know what you're not buying, right? Uh, let me turn the air conditioning off here. I'm gonna shut the door and I am gonna open the other window because it's hot in these cars. I didn't have them in here very long. All right, let's take a look here. So again, we turn the vehicle to the on position. A couple things I want you to ignore. All of those warning lights, because we haven't started the car, we're indoors. Uh, I don't wanna fume out everybody. Those are uh, gonna stay on because we turned it to on, not uh, to the start. And fuel efficiency is not something that you can ever actually compare when you see it in my videos because a lot of these vehicles end up in idling. Uh, sometimes they're in little mini photo shoots with me for Instagram. Sometimes they're just idling around doing various things for customers. So ignore fuel efficiency, but you can get very good fuel efficiency in both these cars because they have the same engine, same transmission. Left side tack, right side speedometer, nice little display in the center. You've got a lot of things in here. You've got the lane follow assist, or sorry, lane keeping assist, excuse me. And uh, you've got little things like driver tension warning. You have tire pressure monitors. So once we drive, we can see the individual tires, actual pressure in PSI or something else. If you want to do something else, if you're a kilopascal kind of person, you can check that as well. So again, lots of information in here. If you want a digital speedometer, there you go. So really a lot of information in here. And you're going to see the same thing, type, same type of thing in the Forte as well. Just good information, nothing too fancy. It's just a black and white screen, but it tells you what you need to know. Now, coming over to here, you do have a feature that you cannot get in the 2021 Forte. And it's not just that you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, because both these cars have that. For 2022, this car offers wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And the way you can tell if you're just shopping for a Kia, if you hop in, if it says in this exact screen, if it says uh, Android Auto, connect to USB cable, that means it's cabled. If it says press this widget, that means it's wireless. And that's kind of a big deal because at any moment you can pull up your navigation, you can pull up your, you know, a lot of your phone apps. You guys kind of know what Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is. If you don't, you can feel free to search our channel. We'll show you what that is. Um, we've got information on there. But it, a lot of it is really good for practicality. You don't always want to plug in your phone, but all of a sudden you're halfway somewhere and you realize, oh, I do need directions or I'm going to change course. I'm going to go this store instead of that store. You know, you find out the local... Uh, 
sport check store does not have the running shoes you want so you want to go to the next store over uh next town over and you got to figure out where it is you can just call it up wirelessly as you're driving oh yeah there's another store here right so those kind of things are really handy and because it's wireless it's pretty helpful as you tap into the radio here there's another couple of nice features that i like you have hd radio so hd radio is um in most uh cities now You've got an extra clear, kind of like satellite radio level clarity on your FM station there. So I'm a big fan of that. You've also got a couple little things that are new here. Quiet mode is a new feature for 2022. And quiet mode is pretty simple. We've had it in our Telluride in the past. Basically what it does is it turns off the rear speakers and brings you all your music just to the front speakers at volume level seven. Now you can turn it up from there, but when you hit it, it goes to volume level seven. What that does is if you've got kids in the back that need to sleep, a little bit quieter for them. More importantly, if you've got kids, a little bit older kids, and they've got maybe their music in their ears, uh, you can turn off their speakers, listen to your music, and not interfere with them. So kind of a nice feature there, uh, especially in something like the Soul, which is well known for taking rear seat passengers because it's such a great rear seat, which we will show you a little bit later on. Coming down here, spoiler alert, you have manual air conditioning, manual climate controls here. The Forte we're going to show you has automatic climate control. So there is a difference coming up there. We'll show you some of that. I'm going to get the gear shift out of the way. One of the things I really think is important, if you're going to go wireless Android Auto and not wireless Apple CarPlay, I really think you should have the wireless phone charger as well. So you drop your phone here every time you get in the car, it's going to be charging. And of course, if you decide to use it for anything, you're not going to drain the battery. You're going to keep it charged and keep it going. So really nice feature, a special spot for just your phone there. Lots of space for the largest phones and uh, it does wirelessly charge. And then down here, if you want to connect USB, you can go Android Auto Apple CarPlay through this USB or you can use it as a charge port and that one is a charge port. There's a 12 volt port there as well. Automatic transmission is the same on both these cars. It's an IVT transmission, throw it in drive. If you want to manually shift, you can. There's eight different ratios you can go through. Basically, an IVT transmission for us is a very good fuel efficient uh, transmission. It's very nice uh, the way it drives. You also have rump roasters. I'm going to turn them off immediately here because they get warm very quickly. And uh, there are two levels of seat heating here. You're going to see three in the Forte. I don't know that that matters a whole lot. These get just as hot, um, but there is only two. If you wanted three levels, you're not going to get that in the Soul. Drive modes is also another thing where you're going to get only two, not three. It's the one car we have with only two drive modes. Let me just skip over here. We'll show you what they are. Drive mode is normal and sport. So I'd like to see a smart mode, which you will see in the um, Forte, but you don't have that here. I don't know why. It makes no sense to me that this car does not have the smart mode. Doesn't matter, doesn't really factor in for drivability, I guess. Um, but I always tell everybody, if you have a smart mode in your Kia, that's how you should test drive it. It gives you a real sense of what goes on in the car. Uh, this one doesn't have that, and that's no problem. Sport mode makes it a little bit more aggressive, makes it a little bit more fun to drive. So somebody says, I keep my Forte in smart. Yeah, Forte in smart mode is probably the way I recommend. We'll talk about why when we get to the Forte. Overall, a lot of roundness used to be in the sole, but they kind of got rid of some of that roundness. You used to have a lot of roundness in the circles. You had the tweeters on top that were round. You had other things in here that were round. They kind of changed the design here. I like it. It's a little more modern. I'm basically looking at my own car here. I have the same thing. The cloth seats are excellent. There's a cloth here, a little bit of a leather or probably artificial leather on the sides there. Uh, they are very comfortable. Again, the key to the sole is it's always had really comfortable seats. They're better in this generation than any generation pri pre prior to this. Uh, so very comfortable. You do have a sunroof in this one. Is cloth better than leather? Uh, if you ask me, I think cloth is better. Um, I like cloth. Uh, I think most people like leather. Um, it depends on what you want. Cloth is better for the winter. When you get in the car in the cold winter, uh, leather feels very cold. The cloth doesn't. And of course, with the heated seats, the cloth feels to warm up more. Seems like it warms up quicker than the leather. All right. Those of you that are just uh, joining us, with about 53 of you on. Half of you have said, yeah, this is totally worth a like. And the other half have said, nope, not earning it. Uh, do me a favor. If you can, if you think I'm doing a good job, if you just like that I do these things, hit me, give the like button for me. It really helps me out. We'll keep going through. Okay, real quick, we're just going to go steering wheel to steering wheel here. And uh, some of you are asking some questions. I will get to them if I'm missing them. Don't worry, I will get to them. You can ask any time, but I will answer them a little bit later in the video. In this car, you have a little different design than any other Kia. So you have your menu controls, which control the center displays right there. Uh, you have this up down is controlling that center display as well. And then the cruise control is kind of around the outside here. Very easy to use once you understand, like once you sort of get used to it. Um, but it is just a standard cruise control. Spoiler alert again, the Forte at this price point, actually a hair under this price point, you have the smart cruise control, which I'll tell you what that is when we get to the Forte. There's that new logo, does look pretty sharp, has a little bit of a metal grain to it. I don't know if you can sort of see the little lines across. I don't know, it's kind of a horizontal line metal grain to it. It looks pretty cool. Audio controls here. 
automatic headlights. We're going to talk about the headlights here. You have headlights. You also have on both these cars an auto high beam system that is class leading at any price point. Uh, so when you turn on your high beams, you're going to find that the car uh, is capable of automatically turning them on and off based on seeing traffic in front of you. It's one of the best systems out there as far as recognizing things. It also turns off when it sees street lights, which is really, really, really helpful. We're also going to show you the um, fog lights on this car a little bit later. Both of these cars have LED headlights. It's an important piece of the package on both of these, and I want to talk to you about them, and we'll show you them later. As far as safety, just minor safety, we've got a lot of other safety to talk about. Um, lane keeping assist, which we talked about before, can help keep you centered in the lane. It's also got a camera up top for facing outward, just behind the mirror there. That camera sees the lane markers, keeps you centered. It's also good for forward collision avoidance. So it's got some forward collision avoidance abilities. You have blind spot detection, which also means rear cross traffic alert. I'll show you the backup camera in a second. Uh, but that is, the, of course, the blind spot detection. We all are familiar with that. You can see that there. If someone's in your blind spot, that light will light up. It'll beep at you if you try to go in there. And... Um, and then there's the auto start stop button here as well, which a lot of you seem to absolutely hate. Um, I think you've had bad experiences with some of these other cars. The Kia one works really well. Um, you barely perceive it. It does save you some fuel. It does save emissions. Uh, if you don't like it, you can turn it on or off. But I think a lot of you are kind of overreacting to how bad you think that system is. It works very, very, very well on these cars. Some cars that used to be bad, it used to have a real delay. Uh, when you lifted your foot off the brake, the car would, of course, stop at a stoplight. But when you lift your foot off the brake, it can take a while to start. These ones, it's instant. It's really good, guys. Uh, so again, you can complain to me about it if you don't like it, but it's, it's really good in this car. Okay, lots of questions coming in. So we're going to jump quickly into the Forte, talk about some differences, and then we'll get to your questions. You can continue to ask them. I appreciate that. Uh, I just want to you know when we're getting to them because I do want to go through all of them. And it looks like there's a good bit of interaction today. One other thing that's really nice about this car, let me just flip up here. You do have the white LED lights that really makes for a much richer looking interior when you see this car at night. Um, it's just, it's nicer. Tinted windows on the sole. We're going to talk about the rear seat and trunk in a second, uh, but tinted windows are kind of nice. You don't get the automatic tinted or the tinted windows in a Forte. This one is the premium. So we're moving from the EX Plus to the EX Premium, and we're going to show you some of those details that are a little bit higher class. So of course, not being a sole, not being a really crossover type thing, seat is a little bit lower. Now it's still pretty good. It's not like it's one of those really low cars. We showed you myself getting in the sole, a little bit more of a duck to get in here and a little bit less headroom. I'll put the seat all the way down. And so again, pretty good headroom, especially underneath the uh, sunroof there. If you're six, five and you want to fit underneath here, you're going to be fine. I'm going to move the seat forward a little bit because I am too far back just so that when we get to the thing, actually, I don't think the sole seat was moved forward enough either. We'll do that. All right, the key, of course, there's no key. It's push button start. So we're gonna go to the on position there. Don't put your foot on the brake, tap it twice. And you can go to the on position there. Let's shut the doors here and I'm gonna open the window again. Again, it's warm here. So again, same type of display that you saw on the sole, but we're stepping up just a little bit here and there. So this is a wider one and you can see that little red dot. That's a bar graph that moves. This is, um, uh, a color display. So we're, as we cycle through some of the same things here, lane keep assist, uh, driver tension warning, we can turn that on a little bit later, uh, tire pressure monitors, some of these things will have color displays. There's some color displays right there. So there are some colors and it's not just uh, red, there should be blue in here as well. Uh, if I had the driver tension warning, I could show you some of that stuff. But the point is you have a little bit better of a display in this car. Basically the exact same functions though. So no real difference there. You wanna see your speed limit, we can look at that. So here's where I talk about fuel efficiency. Uh, 0.6 kilometers, 47.1 liters per 100 kilometers. Uh, that's because we were sitting in a car wash with this car just in the last drive we did. So ignore fuel efficiency when you see a dealer. Here's the drive modes. Let's go talk through them in a second. There's your speedometer, lots of things in there. I like this display a little bit better, but it's really not a whole lot different. There are a real step up when you move a long ways up the price point. Seltos has got a good one. Nero's got a good one. Coming over here, exact same screen. I think I forgot to show you the backup camera on the other car, but it's exactly the same as this car. So we'll show you there. Really big thing. I've sat in some Toyotas re recently. I've sat in some Hondas recently. They do not have the cameras that Kia has. You've got really good cameras here. When I turn the wheel, the yellow and red follow you basically where the car is going to go. The blue line is when you're backing into a parking spot, you're going to line that up with the side lines and it'll line up perfectly with the side lines of the parking spot. And you will find that you can uh, really get it straight in that parking spot every single time. Really clear here. And of course, having the blind spot detection when there's a car passing, crossing my path. And this is a really good example. Let's just look over here real quickly. Behind that sole, there's no possible way I could see if someone came in through that man door right over there, right? If somebody's walking here, there's no possible way with my eyes that I can see that. However, the rear of the car 
can see things before I can. There's a radar plate at the rear that uses for blind spot detection. When you throw the car in reverse, it can sense anybody coming way in behind there, whether it's a car, whether it's a vehicle, and it will give me warnings here saying, hey, something's about to cross your path. And uh, so that really works well in this car. Now, this car, you do step up to Sirius XM satellite radio in addition to the AM FM with the HD radio. You happen to go back to a wired connection here. Uh, they just don't offer it quite yet. And you don't have the quiet mode here, but you do have everything else that you would have had in um, some of the, in the other vehicles. So the quiet mode that we talked about changes just due to a yearly thing. Now, coming down here, automatic climate control. It's happened to be set to Fahrenheit. I can set it to, climb, to, um, to Celsius if I want. You can see I can set it to whatever I want. It blows fairly firm, so it's pretty good. But as it reaches temperature, it'll quiet itself down. It'll go through on its own. And uh, so you have a really nice system here uh, that's an upgrade system. Once you set the temperature, you never have to touch it again if you don't want. You still have the wireless phone charging right here. You still have the exact same USB organization right there. You have the same engine and transmission. You have three levels of heat seat heating on this one instead of just two. And you also have a heated steering wheel, which I believe the other one had, it was on this side here. I forgot to point that out. Heated steering wheel on this side on this car. The drive modes, we're gonna talk about really quickly, and then we'll jump to your questions. Remember we said the smart modes. Let's talk about what that means. Uh, let's just zoom in here for a second. Whoops, come on camera. Whoop, there we go. So there's that color display. You see some red, but we'll switch through here. There's the blue as well and the gray. So normal, sport, and smart. So normal is just like it would come from the factory, just kind of normal. The smart mode is essentially your new eco mode. So the eco, the peop, the thing that people used to complain about the eco mode is if you draw, drove efficiently anyways, the eco mode was great. It would save you fuel. But if you had to get into the throttle a little bit on the eco mode, you ended up with a car that would resist the downshift. It would feel a little sluggish. And all of a sudden it would like, you'd have to push further on gas and then it would rev like crazy. The smart mode senses when you're getting into the throttle, oh, maybe I should move you to normal mode. Get into the throttle more, oh, maybe I should move you to sport to sport mode. So some really nice feature there. It's just, I think the smart mode drives really great. The soul drives fantastic as is. I just, the smart mode, the way they've explained the technology to me, um, I like it better. I think it works better. You also move up here to Uvo Intelligence. So Uvo Intelligence is a cell phone app. You can see it by these buttons and you can use those buttons for navigation help, uh, SOS or tow truck help. But the real benefit of Uvo Intelligence is you have a cell phone app where you can tell if your car is locked, you can locate your car, you can um, remote start your car. Most people use it for remote start. It's actually probably the number one feature on that car. So it is a subscription service. It's still free for three years at this point. They haven't decided what they're gonna charge for it beyond that because they're still probably adding features. And um, you'll have lots of things there. You'll notice I just turned on the lights here, same LED lights in here. So that white bright LED light, which is really nice. So a lot of the same features. And again, just a little different seating. Oops, let me flip around. Just a little different seating position here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about uh, your questions here. We're gonna go through them as best we can. Oh, one thing I should point out, we should go back over here. Uh, sunroof as well, we pointed out. Uh, instead of just the regular cruise control, you have smart cruise control. So again, same features um, for safety-wise as far as when we talk about lane keep assist, when we talk about blind spot detection, the smart cruise control is the added benefit. Smart cruise control keeps the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you after you set the cruise control. So if you set it at 100 kilometers an hour, someone cuts in front, you end up with, um, and some cuts in front going slower, your car will automatically slow down. They clear the way or you just move out of their way, your car will automatically speed up. The best place that people forget to use this um, cruise control is in stop and go traffic. If you have stop and go traffic, you can use this smart cruise control and it works great. Uh, cars slow down in front of you, your car slows down. Cars speed up, your car speeds up. It takes all the stress out of stop and go driving. So kind of a nice feature that way. All right, we're jumping out for a second. Here's where we're headed. I wanna show you the rear seat space in these two cars because it goes about getting that rear seat space in very different ways. We're gonna show you trunk space as well because the Sporte has a surprising hidden compartment that not a lot of people know about. The sole's got a floor that drops more than you would think. Uh, so I wanna show you the way those uh, trunks work. And again, rear seat trunk space and lighting. That's where we're headed. And we're gonna to continue to answer your questions. So going through now, we're gonna see some of your questions. Okay. Somebody is on here spamming us because they would like to argue about our reliability because they've heard once that there was an issue on a Kia. So uh, to that person, I'm going to tell you that you can go look up reliabilities. Every car has, uh, every manufacturer has, has issues. Uh, Kia is among the most reliable vehicles out there. So we're going to uh, get rid of some of those because I'm not going to have that debate today. Uh, you clearly have your point of view. All right, keep going on here. Okay, 
Cloth is better for thermals, less cold in the winter, less hot if parked in the sun in the summer. Leather's easier to clean spills. That's a good point too, especially liquid spills. Can you adjust the headrest forward and backward or just an up and down? So both these cars, it goes up and down. It does not go forward and back. Some of our old Sorrentos used to do that. Our previous model year Sorrentos used to do that. On these cars, they don't do that. Somebody says, I prefer the Kia cameras. Yeah, Kia's rear view cameras are excellent. They're very, very good. Uh, da, 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 da. Could I put blind spot discs on the Forte's rear view mirrors? I have them on my car currently and it's something I've grown accustomed to. Oh yeah, yeah. So if you want those wide angle mirrors, you can still stick them on. So let me just talk real briefly what we're talking about. If you want the wide angle little circle mirrors that you put on your mirrors, you can do that. What, the only thing I would avoid is don't put them in front of this little, um, I don't know if you can see it there. Uh, if I get it out of the way, there we go. That little sticker or that little light right there. There is no software uh, there is no hardware that senses from the mirrors. So when you have someone in your blind spot, what it's actually doing is there's a radar plate back in this area on both of the cars that speaks to that light. So as long as this isn't covered up, you can absolutely put the wide angle mirrors on. If you like using those wide angle mirrors, yeah, by, by all means, put them on. Just don't block that light, which I think is common sense um, if you know the car, but sometimes I think people make mistakes and they stick it on, they forget they have that light there and all of a sudden, you know, you lose a feature. So absolutely, you can put those sticky little um, blind spot mirrors on if you like. Okay, would you choose the Forte GT Limited or the Forte 5 GT? Uh, I'm partial to hatchbacks, but the Limited has the Bose audio. Those are the price, those are the decisions you're going to make right there. I think that's that's probably it right there. Is Bose audio in the sedan, or a little bit more practicality in the hatchback? I quite like the hatchback, uh, but I also quite like my music. If I'm starting to go into a top level car, so I don't know. Somebody says I prefer to look at the sedan more than the Forte Five. That's cool. Uh, da, 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 da. How are the finance rates? So I never talk about finance rates on these videos because I do them live but sometimes people don't watch them for another month or two. So I'm very careful because some of our programs change, well, all of our programs change every month. Uh, so the best way to find out our finance rates is go to our dealer's website, brandforkia.ca, or you can go to kia.ca uh, for all that kind of stuff. And that's the only reason I don't put it on is because, um, like I said, those things change monthly and I don't want to quote something that could be way out of date by the time somebody watches this uh, video. Uh, da, 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 da. For Kia prices, they're really affordable for what they are. Kias are amazing. Yeah, they are amazing cars. Just got a 2015 Kia Soul yesterday. It's amazing. Yeah, the Soul has been really popular. The thing about the Soul is the way you sit in that car, the way your guests sit in that car, it's really good. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Is this the GT Soul? Where's the red line? No, it's not the GT Soul. It's the um, it's the EX um, Plus model. Okay, so we're going to go rear seat and rear seat. We're going to go trunk to trunk, and then we're going to go look at lighting. We're going to run five minutes long today, so stay with us if you want. If you haven't hit your like already, just do me a favor, hit that like button, and we'll jump right in. All right, rear seat, again, windows are tinted on here. Same thing with the front. When I jump in here, I think the seat's a little further back than I needed it. I brought it back to film. Pretty easy to get in and out of, and I got more headspace than I'm gonna have in any car this length that I can think of. The other thing that's really good, my legs are flush to this seat. In a small car, and even in large cars, to have your seat legs flush to the seat really enhances comfort, and you don't see that in a car of this length. And then you look at my knee space here, which again, I think this seat can move forward a little bit for me, but even if it doesn't, are you gonna fit a six fiber back here? Probably yes, I think you could. You might have to move a little bit down from where I am, but. I mean, I can, I always sit tall in the car, but I mean, like you've got a lot of space above me here and you've got a lot of space down with my knees here. It's pretty comfortable. You've got an armrest in here. The back of these seats right here is plastic. When I go over to the passenger side on this case, you have a um, pocket right here that is a sort of leather-like pocket. The plastic back seats allow you to wipe down the seats. If you've got kids like I do, just wipe it down with a damp cloth. It's fully clean. There's a single USB port back here. So there's Kia Soul. Probably the best back seats in any small car. And now I'm gonna jump into a car that is not the Kia Soul. So how does this compare? Is it as good? Is it good enough? Let's find out. All right, same idea back here. I'm gonna put the seatbelts, unattach them. Somebody's done a safety already on this. All right, let me just jump in here. Same idea, I'll show you how it can get in. All right. This one here, there is a bump out. I'm about six feet tall. I'm sitting behind myself. It's pretty good. Now, over here, my feet, my legs are still on the seat, but they're just a little bit less supported, just a little bit less supported. Still excellent. And you've got tons of room here from my knee to the seat, still plastic back seats. Flip the camera around over here. You've got the netted pocket instead of the leather pocket, you know, a little style difference. And you've got the vents instead of the USB port at this trim line. So that's kind of the differences in the back seats here. 
Both have uh, sunroofs. When you look forward, you can see that sunroof up there. Now let's check trunk space really quickly. Now the Forte has a cool little trick here. It has a smart trunk, so I could set it up to just stand near the back of the trunk with this key in my pocket, not touching it, and the trunk could open. I haven't set that up right now, so what I'm gonna do instead is hold down this button, which won't work because I have the car running. This Forte at this trim level has a button underneath the camera. Lower trim levels don't have that, so there's a lot of ways to open the trunk here. Everybody knows that the sedan, on a hatchback or something like the Kia Soul, you're gonna have a bigger square opening. You have a smaller opening just because it's a sedan. Now, the trunk is pretty much a class-leading trunk. It was when the car came out in 2019, but the thing that people forget is, if you want a spare tire, you can get one. This one comes with an inflator kit, which is fine if you have roadside assistance. If you don't get the spare tire, you have a massive amount of space here. Like, that is a very, very deep well. If you're going camping, and I am soon, you could fit an entire bag's worth of stuff down there before you've even started filling your trunk. So you've got that massive space in the trunk. You've also got a load floor. And what I use to measure trunk space in, this, in these videos is my teddy bear. Teddy bear is consistent because no matter what car I throw him in, you get a sense of how he fits. So you can look at any one of the videos that I do. When we look at trunk space, there's a teddy bear in there. His belly's against the back seats and you can fit a second teddy bear behind him. Now, you can't fit a second teddy bear on top of him, but if you need floor space, the Forte is the winner for sure. Kia Soul, let's just take a look over here. Let's throw, throw these floor mats out of my way just for a minute. Looks a lot smaller. Quite frankly, it is smaller. Now, what you can do is you can look underneath here. This one does have a spare tire standard, but you can drop this floor significantly. So when you do that, instead of having underfloor storage, you now have space on top and we'll throw teddy bear in there. Okay. You guys are talking a lot about issues with cars. You seem very worried about reliability. I think what you need to do is look up JD Powers where they rank Kia for quality, dependability, reliability. You know, the studies on these cars are excellent. So you guys hear a news report and I think you're overplaying those news reports. I used to work for Honda as well. Honda had their issues, trust me. Um, so just look at the actual studies on these cars rather than, you know, a Facebook report or something like that. Teddy bear in here. Here's teddy bear. Now, he takes up kind of the whole trunk space. You cannot stick another teddy bear behind him over here. You could stick another teddy bear on top of him over here. And I always say, you know, a Kia Soul, you can buy a dishwasher from Lowe's or Home Depot tonight and you can take it home. And if you're handy, unlike me, you can install it yourself. So fold down seats in both these cars, but of course the bigger opening in the Soul will allow you to put bigger things in there. Really quickly, we're gonna to go to headlights and then we're gonna turn the car or go back to your questions again. Just wanna show you the headlights because they are something I highly recommend. Uh, whoops, go to the on position there, there we go. When I say I highly recommend the headlights, what I really mean is I highly recommend the LED headlights. Kia Soul has two levels of headlights. These look yellow right now. They are a very bright white light and then there's the fog lights down below. So the two types of headlights you can get in a Kia Soul, if you go lower trim levels, you're gonna have some round headlights down here or even lower just that whole area but filled with a headlight and you'll have a signal light up here. What you have on this car is really bright headlights. That blinking of that marker light is just the way it interacts with the camera. It doesn't blink in real life. And then really bright fog lights as well. The white color of these lights creates a really natural daylight type color at night. It's a luxury car type feeling and this car also has the LED lights as well. And you get this really clear view at night. Neither of these cars come on the base level with LED lights, but as you move up the trim lines, you can get them. And I highly recommend them if you can spring for them because that single light there is your high beam and low beam. And you have, again, it's gonna look a little yellow to your camera. It's very white in real life, but a sharp cutoff, a really bright light. They're high end luxury lights and you've got them in your non-luxury car. A lot of luxury cars don't have lights nearly as good as these. I drive the Kia Soul and it is phenomenal at night. So again, both these cars are available with halogen lights. If you can, I do recommend trying to get the LED lights. It's not a big deal if you don't, uh, but if you have, if, if you're sitting on the fence between one or the other, if you go for the LED lights, it's not something that you will regret. All right, go through there. Okay, we still got some people complaining about quality, so I'm gonna ignore you guys because it just doesn't back, it's not backed up by the studies. I know that you want me to believe or acknowledge that there's all sorts of problems. It's just not something I see here at the dealership level. 
It's not something that's backed up by JD Power, by proper quality studies. Yes, every car that has an engine will have an issue, can have an issue, some of them will have an issue. So you guys are on that, we're gonna go on with everything else. Can the Soul fit a large dog in the back with the seats down? Looking for a vehicle that's comfy for my dog. Yeah, I don't know how big your dog is, uh, but yeah, the Soul isn't gonna be better than the Forte for that, for sure. First of all, when you have the floor up to where I had it, they can jump in and sit there. And this is like very square, big area, especially with those seats down, like you mentioned. Um, even if the seats are up, you can put them in the back seat, but seats down, no question about it. This is, we're talking small crossover space in there. Uh, it's very, very roomy in the back there, especially with those seats down for a dog. So great idea if you're putting a dog in there. Yeah, for sure, the soul is great for that. Okay, uh, what does it take to import one of your key vehicles to US? Long story short, we cannot sell a new vehicle to a US person. We would lose our dealership if we did that. So same thing with the US, cannot sell one to Canada. So it's just kind of the way it works. Uh, da, 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 da. In the market for soul, not sure about 2021, when they go on clearance or get a new 2022. Okay, well, that's a good question. What would I suggest? Should, I, should you go with a 2021 or a 2022? If you can find a 2021, go for it. This one's $100 more than the previous model year. Uh, we don't have any 2021s in stock. We're having trouble getting 2022s right now. It's still a popular car. The real basic change, uh, there's a couple minor, minor, minor things, but the real change is just the logo. Um, that's the new logo on this car. Um, but yeah, if you can find a 2021, go for it. We're kind of beyond that stage with the Soul. Uh, if someone has one, then yeah, absolutely take it. It's, I've got a 2020 and I love it. Uh, 2021, 2022, not really any changes. There's, there's like nerds like me know of a couple changes, but nothing that's material differently other than the logo to a lot of people. Uh, somebody wants to know if the Forte has a rattling problem. No, it doesn't. They're solid cars. I've never heard of a rattling problem in a Forte. Uh, I'm sure that they have developed a rattle, but none of our, I've never heard that complaint here. Uh, da, da, da. Where else we got? Okay, can the soul fit large dog? We got to there. If Forte is without battery power, how do you open the car door to open the hood to replace the vehicle battery? So the Forte is without battery power, very simple. Uh, you've got this key in my pocket here. So let me just flip, you got this key here. Let's flip it around. In here, if you look at this little piece right here, there's a little button on the top there. There is a key that comes out of this area right here. So if I push uh, that little button right there, this piece comes out and it's got a key attached. I won't do it because I only have one hand right now. You push a key into there, you pull the door handle out and uh, you lift that up. Whoops. Anyways, yeah, you lift that up and it comes off. I have videos on my Kia class. Um, how do I use the key in my keyhole on my Kia? Um, it takes seconds to do. That key comes off, you start it with the key, um, you can pop the hood, you can get in. So any keyless entry car, just look up Kia class or how do I use my key in my keyhole on my Kia. Uh, you'll see that on my YouTube page uh, here. We have ways of how to do that. So pretty easy to get in if you need to. What size tires do you get on the GT Limited? Oh, off the top of my head, I don't remember. Do you have any in stock? GT Limited, no. We don't have any lim uh, GT at all in stock right now. We can certainly get them. If you're interested in it, you can give us a call, 519-304-6542 if you're local or somewhat local. Um, can you choose different wheels? You can always choose different wheels in any of the cars, yeah. Do the 2022 soles come with mood lighting? They will at certain trim levels. The one I have today does not. If you move up one trim level, it does have the mood lighting in there. So good question there. That's one of the people, one of the things people really love. Uh, da, 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 da. Your 2020 is a key start and does not have that. Yeah, if you have a key, if you have a keyed sole, um, you'll have a key hole. Um, or no, it's the same thing. Yeah, let me just show you on the sole. Uh, da, 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 da. Same thing on the sole. There's a little button down there. I think the older ones used to have a keyhole. I think mine has a keyhole. Now they cover it up, but same idea. If you ever need to use the key in the door, you can. So uh, yeah, uh, like I said, just look it up on my channel. You'll find that and we'll go from there. How do you tell what trim level your 2015 Kia Soul is? And also my car didn't come with spare tire. What should I do? Um, 2015 Souls, I think they all came with spare tires. So you just contact whoever you bought it from, but you can buy one as an accessory. Um, how do you tell what year it is? I'd have to just see the car. It depends on where you're from, what you do. Um, certain trim things, uh, there's like, yeah, depends on what you need. Um, there's a bunch of different models in 2015. So I'd be happy to help you, but you just have to send me a private email. But best thing to do is if you're, from, if you're not from Canada, just connect with your dealer. They'll be able to tell you. And it's also in your VIN number will tell you. Uh, okay, da, 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 da. somebody has an off topic question that's just come in, but I can't see it on my computer yet. There we go. Just want to say that you are, thank you for your videos. Thank you. Just about 2029 on Nero PHEV SX here in Calgary after watching videos. Oh, so somebody from Calgary 
owes me a referral fee. <laughs> Hopefully that's good. All right, guys, we're gonna leave it like that for a while. Uh, tomorrow and Wednesday, I have no plans. I have two days left this week. If there's a car you wanna see, and I have it in stock, which isn't always guaranteed, Hyundai or Kia, let me know, uh, reach out to me, and uh, we'll do that for you. I wanna thank everyone for watching. It's been fun. We got about 50, 60 on, 55 people said, hey, this is worth a like, and I super appreciate that. That's awesome. Uh, if you have any more questions, I'm not afraid to pull these exact same cars back in here sometime, so don't feel like I'm afraid to pull them back in because I've already done a video. We'll do it again sometime. We'll do it again anytime. So I wanna thank everyone for watching. We will see you again tomorrow, and let me know what you wanna see. We'll chat. Thanks, everyone.